Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining another tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to simulate terrain using these cubes or really they're more slabs. This project is really cool and teaches a lot of fundamental concepts. Just to show you another example of what we'll be building, I'm gonna refresh this with some different parameters. Make it a little bit smaller and faster to load. This is a much smaller version. At the end, I will also show you how to make a GIF of the terrain cutout that looks almost as if it's sliding along the terrain. Like with any graphics project, I think it's really important to start with the absolute fundamental concept that you're going to need, and the thing that we need most is the ability to draw one of the slabs. I'm going to start with the two functions that we will need. Def setup is just where we will create the canvas and start populating it with our logic. We'll start with a size of 500, 500, but we'll be changing that very soon. And then we're going to call draw block. When that function exists, we're just going to pass it in an X and Y variable. So we can go ahead and make that function draw block X, Y. We have the ability to create custom shapes that go beyond primitives. It's really easy to use these shapes. We just have to start each shape with begin shape. And then, actually I need to put in a comment because I like to say, so this is the top face, vertex, x, oh, I forgot. We do need to define one more thing before we can do this. I need to say block size equals, we'll go with 10, actually for this we'll say 20, and then block height equals 20. So block size, block height draw block, begin shape, vertex, x. So this will be x minus block size, y. So that's the left vertex of our top face. And then we're gonna do the top vertex, which is in the center for x, y minus block size divided by two. If you're not familiar with how isometric tiles work, it's usually like that. It's half of the width is the height of the top face. Vertex, vertex, x plus block size, y, vertex, x, y plus block size, divided by two. Then, since this is all part of this custom shape that we're building, we have to call end shape. And I'm going to say close as a parameter to this. And that will automatically draw a line between this final vertex and this first vertex. So if we send it to 50, I pull this over, you can see we're drawing this top face of this single tile in the middle of our canvas. Going forward, we're going to do the left face. It plays out in almost the exact same way. Begin shape. The vertexes, vert I keep saying vertexes, the vertices can get just a little bit more complicated, but we're starting at that left vertex of the top face. Then we're going straight down. Vertex X, Y plus block. Two. Vertex x, y plus block height plus block size divided by two. Vertex x minus block size y plus block. call close again. I think that's right. Let's just run it. So that's a cube or it's starting to become a cube because these are the same but if we change block height to let's say 5 then it becomes more of this very thin slab which is exactly what we want. Now we just need to replicate the left face for the right face. Begin shape Theoretically, you could draw all of this within one shape, but it just made a little bit more sense to me. 
to do each one individually. Y vertex x y plus block size divided by two vertex x y plus block height plus block size divided by two vertex x plus block size y plus block height and then our final end shape close let's run that and there you go we have our slab just to make sure that it absolutely works let's change our block height to something larger than the block size and now you have this column so the next part can be a little complicated and I may end up copying in some code but we're actually now that we have the slabs let me change this before I forget 10 and 5 I think will look just fine we need to define a few more variables the first of those are grid height equals we'll say we'll start with 30 grid width equals 30 with our block size I guess we'll leave that for now we need to go ahead and define our Perlin noise parameters or our details that we're going to use for our Perlin noise if you're not familiar with Perlin noise I'll put a link in the description and maybe in the corner of this video if I can figure out how to do it to a video that I did on the basics of Perlin noise that will help you understand I just want to get these variables out of the way because we'll be using them in just a few seconds and then I guess we'll go ahead and add image border buff equals five honestly the, this next part is probably the most complicated piece of the project when we're generating the grid I want the structure the elevation structure whatever you want to call it I want it to be centered on the image regardless of its dimension width equals grid width times block size plus grid height times block size plus image border buff times block size height equals grid height times block size divided by two see this is the part where I'm already kind of thinking there needs to be an addition in here somewhere that accounts for the block height because block size divided by two is only accounting for the top face which will make up most of the height of the the 3d concept of the block but anyway that maybe that's that's another thing so we're going to leave that for right now. Well, we, we still need to add the image buff, just like the other one, plus image border buff times block size divided by two. Well, I think that's actually supposed to be block size. Right now, we just need to calculate what that starting square is. Start block x equals, this, this part is really complicated. I'm not even going to try to, well, the, especially the start block Y. Grid height divided by two times block size plus grid width divided by two times block size. We start in the center, width divided by two and height divided by two, and then we adjust based on the grid and block size. Minus, man, I can't type. We still need to add in, I guess we can go ahead and add in the noise. There's no reason to wait, I guess. So plus int noise zero zero times we're going to use those variables that we defined up top I 
think that will work. We'll find out in a minute when we run it. We also need to add this to, it's mostly gonna be the same thing, so let me just copy it. It's gonna be very similar. We need to add this to the height of the image, but it does not need to be divided by two here. Okay, grid width, I don't really have any way to, I guess if I run it, it should be a very small image. I don't know if this is correct. Oh, we're not setting it to that width and height yet. Let's just see what it says. But it's going to account for this grid height and grid width. Okay, so something has changed, which is good. And it kind of, you can see, like we did most of the height with block size divided by two, so theoretically the height would be less. I think it's gonna work. We'll find out when we actually start building the grid, which we can do right now. I don't think we need anything else to make that happen. So with the grid, just like any other grid, we just need to step through it. 4x in range, grid height, or y in range, grid width. We need to draw, we can draw every block. Let's start like that, I guess. We'll say draw block start block plus x times block size minus y times block size so that's the x that's the x coordinate of this block that we're currently drawing and this will essentially be for the bottom layer for the y start block y plus x times, oops, not start, x times block size divided by two. Start block y plus x times block size divided by two. So this is all in parentheses. Plus y times block size divided by two. And we'll add one more component when we actually are generating noise, but we can't add that just yet because we don't we don't have that value so if I run this it's not going to work start blocks is not defined start block X so if I run this okay there you go so I think that works really well I think something weird might be going on with this top piece that's pretty cool so now looking at this you can see where we've drawn the grid let me change the size of the grid just to do it Let's change this to 60 oh I forgot I'm drawing one block just kind of manually so we'll get rid of him in a second this works pretty well even though the top is a little bit off you can still see how we've adjusted to an irregular grid the center of our structure is still kind of in the middle of the canvas I think that looks really good so the only thing that we need to add now this is actually probably the easiest part all the all the tough stuff is kind of behind us we need to figure out how many cubes we're going to draw at each point in the grid int noise so that's going to be the okay so just to give a quick overview that's all we really would need for let's just see what happens with that well never mind I'm scrambling a little bit each call to the noise function is going to give us a value between 0 and 1 we're going to scale that up so that we can actually use it for elevation and that's what those noise multiplier and noise dampener variables are doing so x, y, but we need to multiply it by our noise scale. Noise multiplier, and then all of this, so this is the int, that's the final noise value, and then we're gonna multiply, or we're gonna divide that by our noise dampener. That's just gonna kind of flatten the elevation. Now, we just run through those cubes, so for i, i for iterations, I guess, for i in range cubes, the number of cubes, at each x and y coordinate, we just have to add to the end of the y value. We'll draw a cube, and then on the next cube, we just need to come up. We don't have to go left or right, we just have to come up, so i, times block height.
I wonder if the mic picked up that thunder. That that's I had a really long pause there, and it was because there was thunder right outside my window. So if we run this, well, there you go. I think that looks. That's I honestly did not expect it to work. I thought something was way off with the height and the elevation, but there it is. Oh, I still need to get rid of that single cube. So where's he? He is here. We can pull him out. Up here, back in our variables. I'm gonna to add to the block lines, we'll say two, and then stroke width equals two. We might change that to one. After we draw the left face, I'm gonna calculate the separation between the lines that we're gonna draw. Line set equals float block height. We're just converting block height to a float and we're dividing it by the number of lines. 4L in range lines line x minus block size y plus l times line sep x y plus block size divided by 2 plus line sep now if i run this again it does not work oh I put line instead of L here. That's supposed to be L. And there we go. It adds a lot of depth. Now that we can see, we can distinguish exactly what the left face is. It's just like a shadow. The last thing I'm gonna do for this part in the setup function after size, we're gonna define, I like these colors a lot. And these will be the colors that you'll see in the thumbnail. 190, 194, 249 for the background. And then we're not going to change the fill, at least in this example. 254, 171, 227. If I run this again, pretty close to the final product that I have on my own version of this. That looks really good. The last thing I'll mention, I'm not really going to walk through it, but I'll just tell you how you can make a GIF of this. My whole process is I just repeat this part. So I would say 4G for GIF in range. I would have a variable for how many frames I want in the GIF. So you could just say 10. And then you would just tab this over. For each frame, you would save it. You could say something like examples GIF plus G or plus string G plus PNG. That's exactly the method that I use to save a GIF. The only thing you have to do if you use this method, obviously if we just run it 10 times, it's gonna generate the exact same structure. You just have to adjust your X and Y value in your noise function for the G value. So literally, I would take this, I would add G to X, and I would add G to Y. I did need to point out one last thing. I actually forgot to mention this earlier in the video, but we're not currently doing anything with this SW value. That's because this is the stroke width and we're not setting the stroke width. So after size, we can just say stroke weight SW. And that's essentially all we're doing with it. Just to show you what it does, I'll run this. The lines are very thin because they have a stroke weight of one. But if we bring this up to five, now we're getting a very different aesthetic, but I wanted you to have that option and I forgot to mention it earlier. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. This project is so cool and there's so many great things you can do with it. If you learned something new, remember to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will catch you in the next video.